What's up guys? Thank you for joining me today. We are going to take a deep dive into the final between Ali Farag and Paul Cole from the recent NetSuite Open in San Francisco. I know the video is a bit overdue. I've been swamped on my side, but I'm committed and I want to bring this to you guys. And I truly, I'm excited about this one because I feel like I'm sharing some new dimensions that we haven't talked about yet. So get ready. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, like it, leave a comment. Let's have a discussion with respect for everyone and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Share it with a friend or a family member who enjoys squash and uh, let's, let's grow this community. I really appreciate your support. So let's check it out. First things first, we already know this. This was the final between Paul Cole and Ali Farag. And here is the crazy setup for this match. Only four games, but it lasted 70 minutes. 21 minutes for the first, 17, 13, and 15 minutes for the next three games. As you can see, there wasn't much separating these guys. If you haven't watched the match, you should definitely check it out on Squash TV. I'm not going to go through the whole match. I actually want to break down, as you'll see in a minute, different elements from a coaching perspective. So high level 30,000 foot view. This match was played in an amazing fair spirit. You see Ali Farag, you know, wanting to whip Paul Coles behind <laughs> when he played some epic shot or dug deep and then hit a winner. You see Ali Farag trying to push Paul Cole, which was actually pretty amusing because as he pushed him, he himself bounced back. Basic physics, Cole is so much heavier than Farak that Cole barely moved and Farak went back himself. So, you know, a lot of fun stuff and there was a lot of respect. They called each other's balls out. There was one point where Cole hit a ball on the front wall that the referee Wayne Smith thought was out, but Farag actually said no, it was in. Like, that's pretty awesome to see in the final of such an epic tournament. So that, that to me, this was a very enjoyable match to watch. So again, if you haven't, check it out on Squash TV. It was played at an extremely high standard for the most part. The guys were not just playing and even Cole especially he's he's evolved a lot so he's not just playing his traditional traditional style of play he's moving the ball around he's changing the angles and the pace and he is adding another new dimension to his game which is really really cool to see and the targets that both guys were hitting always good from Cole into the back corners the drop shot is really good into the front but he started making some using some kills and cross court kills which he hit very accurately Farag on the volley, hitting his corners in the back, hitting the targets in the front. Really, really good to watch. The one thing I noticed, and, and in my opinion, this is why Farag came out on top, despite the games being so close, is that Farag has a few more tools in his tool belt. And I'm going to highlight a couple of differences in his game that that showcase his greater attacking ability and the fact that he takes more time away from Paul Cole than Paul Cole is able to take away from Farag. These subtle little things at the incremental margins have a significant impact on the outcome of the match and at that level, one, two, three, four, five percent deviations between the two players result in a win versus a loss. So pretty cool. And then the, the mental part that I mentioned at the, in this last comment on the slide that you see is that at the critical times of the match, Cole made a couple of silly errors and on game ball actually, in uh, the, th the third game if I recall correctly, he made a silly error. He, he hit a tin lead giving Farag match ball in the fourth, just not characteristic for Cole, but it shows the combination of the mounting mental pressure as well as the physical work that he's probably put in starting to take a toll. So a very, very interesting match, many, many dimensions to this match, so definitely check out the full thing. Here's what I want to do in this video. I'm going to share some coaching specific perspectives to teach you guys a few nuances about the game. And then I'm going to talk about some common patterns that Cole likes to use as well as the common patterns that Farag likes to use. And then we'll show you a couple of epic rallies and also keep that coaching lens through those rallies. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about from a coaching perspective is the effect that repeated length hitting has on your opponent's tee position and then the idea and how the top players in the world adjust their tee position when they've put their opponent under pressure so check this out we're going to watch this first rally from the first game and the way i'm going to do it is how i did it in a few videos in the past i'm going to let you guys watch the whole rally think about what you think 
uh, is happening, how these points that I've mentioned on the slide that you see right now, how do these points apply as you're watching that rally? And if you want to pause it, make some notes, gather your thoughts, do so. If you're keen to develop your own game, take this opportunity to treat this almost as a learning session as we go through it. So here we go. The clip is about to begin in a second. So this is first game, first rally, and you get to just see just how the guys are playing. They're already hitting their targets accurately. They're stepping up on the volley. They're moving the ball around. It's uh, It really set the stage right there. Far I played on Boast moving Cole into the front, just like the fifth, fifth shot maybe he's played in the whole match. Pretty cool that they started with this kind of standard and they maintained this standard throughout the entire match, which was actually very, very impressive. Farag stepping up and volleying, and I'm gonna break that down for you in detail in a second. Okay, so here's the replay of the same rally, and in a minute, I'm gonna break some stuff down. So from here, I'm gonna start doing this in slight slow-mo. So check out that yellow line I've drawn is Farag's average T position. So these guys are playing rallies in the back of the court, that's the T position that he's taking. See, he's there on that same line again. He hits the ball. He's there again, slightly in front. And then watch this. Farag plays a two-wall forcing or working boast or attacking boast, whatever you want to call it. And look, he pushes up his T position to this point now. And relative to the service box, as you can see, his previous T position when they're playing all deep is actually behind the back of the service boxes. When he hits that short ball, the, the two-wall boast, he actually pushes up kind of midway or even slightly in front of the halfway mark between of the service box and he's ready to hunt the volley cole hits a good one so he has to step back and take it at the back but look at that target that he just hit because he hit this target in the back he pushes up again to his attacking t position and one thing you'll notice in a moment which i'll point out is really cool so he continues to stay on this forward attack and T position because Cole is defending now at this point. Cole hits a good defense, so Farag has to move back, and now they would go back to resetting and rallying. And now notice that Cole is in not a super defensive position, so Farag's T position is kind of in the middle of his backcourt versus his forcing attacking T position. And then he steps up again and puts a short ball in. Now he's got Cole stretched out under pressure, so he shifts his T position even further up to one, cover the counter drop, but then also to take time away from Cole for the next shot. And check it out, that's his new T position. Look how far up he is. He's literally on the short line, which is pretty cool. And then from here, he's attacking. And by moving that far up, he's taking away so much time from Cole. And then from there, you can adjust your contact point. So if you take that ball in front, you're actually taking even more time away from your opponent versus letting it get back. So just some coaching points for you guys to think about. Those are skills you have to develop in terms of your contact point of the of where you hit the ball. But this T position piece, if you have hit a good enough shot where you have your opponent under pressure, it is extremely important to consider this the next time you step on court. So there you see Farag stays up because he wants to, again, continue to hunt because he has Cole under some pressure. Cole hits a nice lob, so Farag steps back, and the guys go back to rallying, and you notice Farag's T position in this case, because they're back in rallying mode, is again a more neutral T position. So I thought that was really, really cool, and I wanted to share that with you. The next thing I want to talk about are some patterns and some nuances that you guys can consider. So the most common way that Paul Cole attacks is squeezing his opponents in the back of the court, and then now he started hunting the volley or he goes and plays a straight drop. That's his pattern. He attacks the back and then tries to finish the rally in the front and more recently starts volleying as well short. The one thing that he has done differently, and this is 1B on the screen, is his evolution. He started using the volley drop more effectively and he started using the kill with better angles. So now he's using cross court kills that are fading into the side wall. When you hit a cross court kill, your target should be that the ball takes two bounces before the short line and before the side wall on the other side. So if I'm hitting a forehand kill, I wanna hit that kill so that the ball takes its second bounce before it hits the sidewall and in front of the short line so it fades early and cole is now starting to do that so it's really cool to see as he continues to add more nuances to his to his game with his fitness base he truly will be uh, a force to be reckoned with 
Now, point number two, Farag's he has lots of ways that he sets up his rallies. One of them we just talked about is how he pushes up after attacking either the back or the front of the court with straight drops, straight volley drops. The one that he uses a lot is that he hits a pretty tight ball in the back. And then while the opponent is still fairly deep in the court, he plays that forehand boast. And he plays that two wall attacking boast so well, squeezing the guy and just stretching him out into the front left corner. And then you notice in the last rally how he pushes up onto the tee and takes a really high tee position to look to volley and cut the next shot off. And then whether it's a straight volley or a cross court volley or whatever it is, his volleying is relentless. And he doesn't let his opponent, in this case, Paul Cole, settle unless his opponent hits a good enough lob or a defensive shot. And then he respects that shot and he reset, resets it. And if you wanna learn more about respect and reset, I'll link to a previous video I created on respect and reset. And if you wanna learn more about uh, these combinations and the one-two punch combo that I've talked about in a previous video, I'll link to that over here as well. So now let's jump into a couple of rallies. So again, I'm gonna let you guys watch the rally straight up. And what you're looking here for here is look how Cole is constantly hitting his targets in the back, stretching Farag out, and then playing the squeeze, the high percentage squeezes. Farag is not able to hit accurately enough to get Cole, and there's that cross court kill I just talked about. Farag's not able to hit accurately enough to relieve the pressure and Cole does really, really well to finish that rally off when he gets that really big opening when Farag is stuck behind him. So let's check it out over here. I'm gonna play this one, same clip, in slower motion so we can talk about it. So here we go. This is the first deep squeeze, so look how far back Farag is. Cole is squeezing him in the back, gets a loose ball, he holds, and then he hits back into the same corner. Again, hard movement for Farag, he's stretched out, not able to get that ball straight or deep enough rather that gives cole the opportunity to play a nice squeezing long drop and this is what he does there it is it's like a long drop slash kill he puts a lot of cut on that ball so that the ball angles into the side wall farag gets a loose ball cole hits a nice basic tactics just hitting to the open space tight shot over here this is a, the one two punch combo tight long drop slash kill followed by hunting the volley and hitting to the opposite side of the court. Really simple tactic you guys can try to execute as well. And that's actually referencing one of the previous videos I created about David Palmer's favorite combination. It was that straight kill followed by hunting the cross court. So if you haven't checked that out, check out that video and I'll link to it here so that you can get a really, really good idea of what I mean by that straight kill cross court volley combo. So he keeps Farag under pressure, again, forcing Farag deep into that back corner, another squeeze. There's that cross court kill. So this is a new shot that Cole has added to his repertoire. You notice over here, this his second bounce was right around the short line. The best players in the world can hit that ball so it fades a little bit further in front. And that's where Farag may not have gotten it or he would have been under even more pressure. And I'm sure Cole will figure out how to do that. And then he continues to look for the volley, but respects Farag's shot. Hits another decent ball into the back. I think Farag could have straightened that one out better, but I, I don't, I'm not sure why. Technically, probably something going on. And there is the final cut drop. Farag is stuck in the back of the court. Cole hits the winner. So I hope that gives you an idea of the sort of combinations and the way Cole sets up his rallies and creates pressure by putting pressure into the back of the court and then exploring the straight squeeze options in the front of the court. So now let me show you a video where Farag is doing more uh, of the work in terms of applying pressure on Cole. And watch it and then we'll analyze it in a minute. So now let's check this out in slightly slower motion. Cole actually defended well and reversed that rally, but I wanted to use that as uh, as a way to highlight the way Farag likes to play. So if you watch this, it's a good length by Cole, and Farag's return is even tighter. So there's a squeeze right there. The ball's glued to the side wall. Cole's return is a bit loose, and Cole right there, when Farag make con makes contact, is actually slightly behind Farag meaning he's a bit in the back of the court and Farag uses the classic two wall boast that he loves so much 
really, really stretch and call out. And as you saw from the previous clips, Farag's T position is more aggressive. It's not the, the backcourt length based T position. And then from there, he steps up to take the ball early and puts a little hold on it. So check this out. You'll see it in slow motion. I'm not gonna speed it up fully, but there's the hold and then the push and that helped Cole's movement just a fraction of a second on the T. And look how far forward he is still, Farag, after he hits this. And Cole's under pressure, and Farag is essentially on the short line, wanting to take time away from Cole and apply even more pressure on the next ball. And there's the volley. This was cool. He didn't execute it super accurately, but the obvious shot hitting the open space is playing a drop shot into the front left, and Cole would be running in this direction. So Farag tried to change the angle, but the ball wasn't quite good enough, so Cole was able to recover effectively. Because his ball wasn't that good, he didn't stay super far up on the in the very high T position. He came back to his mid attacking T positions, you can see from the dotted line. And he just puts that ball in, stretching Cole out again, and then continuing to apply pressure on him from there. So check out this next element that I want to talk about. Here's that piece I was talking about with Cole evolving as a player. In the past, it was all back, like very almost all backcourt all attrition, all fitness based. He didn't use his speed and accuracy to attack the front of the court as much. He, he did in terms of playing the straight drop from the front or the counter drop in the front, but he didn't do a ton in the mid court. And now he started doing more with the mid court and he started putting the ball with the, using the cross court kill as well, far more effectively than he used to. So let's check this out. So I want you to just watch this rally and see what Cole's doing differently. So now let's watch that in slow-mo. He was actually under pressure for a bunch of that rally, defended effectively, but the way he finished it is what is different now compared to even six months or a year ago. So check out the lines for the T positions. Farag is still trying to control. There is a good defense. Farag's cross is loose. And see, Cole stays fairly far up on the tee. And he's consciously now thinking about volleying. In the past, he wouldn't have volleyed that short. If he did volley it, he would have probably volleyed it long or he would have let that ball go and then hit that drive. Now he's been he's consciously training with intent and purpose to take that ball in short. And if you notice, Farag... He stuck back because Cole took the ball early. Look how far up he is. And you can tell from Farag's inability to react, he stuttered at first. That's not something that he's used to Cole doing. So that's a, that, to me, is an indication that Cole is, has added a new element, a new layer, and he caught Farag by surprise. And actually, at the end of their match, if I recall correctly, Farag did also say that Paul Cole is evolving a lot. And he used to be, and he is known mostly for his fitness, but he's adding far more dimensions to his game. So when a player of Ali Farag's standard and reputation says something like that, it's a clear indication that Paul Cole is getting better and, and improving his game. So now let's see. Next thing I want to share with you are epic rallies. And there are, I'm sharing three, if I recall correctly. One of them is like, it's what, a minute and a half long. And you see the guys do almost everything. And then there are a couple more after that. So let's get into this. Here is the first epic rally. So over 90 seconds, lots of attacking, counter-attacking. And they're not playing a ton of attacking stuff into the front because if you look at the score it's 10-9 game ball so a lot of players end up taking the approach of i'm gonna essentially mentally break this other person i'm gonna wear them down let's see if they have enough patience and resilience and accuracy to keep playing into the back or are they going to try to attack and go for that cheap winner and hit the tin so that's essentially kind of the, the approach that these guys are taking and then Farag uses that two wall attacking boast. One of his uh, one of his best working shots to get, to push up on the tee. And there's another one. Cole has him under a bit of pressure, but that cross wasn't quite good enough. And there's a good attack, and then Farag pushes up. Another attack, Farag's high up on the tee. You guys can watch this again and see how high up he's staying on the tee. 
Cole's doing very well to just defend and absorb. Some good angle, change of angle. And if you just look at the general T position, Farag's neutral T position is almost the same as Cole's, but Farag is pushing up onto the T so much more than Cole is because he really wants to he's he's hungry he's he has intent and purpose but that was really cool because cole got one opportunity off of a weak boss from farag and that's that drop shot that he has he's almost perfected he hardly ever hits a tin on it and it's almost always glued to the sidewall but if you think about this rally farag was pushing up significantly more often than cole was farag was the one who was taking the bull by the horns and actually attacking cole it is very difficult at this level when you can consistently attack without hitting the tin. It's very difficult to always be on the receiving end or almost always be on the receiving end to constantly be defending. And if you do not take that proactive approach and you do not go and actually attack your opponent with some uh, with some volley drops, with some kills, with by changing the angles in an aggressive way in the front of the court, by, by taking control of the mid court yourself, it's very, very hard. You have to be significantly fitter than your opponent, and you have to be so mentally patient and resilient, and you have to hit your targets so accurately in the back. It's just the percentages, in my opinion, are not in your favor unless you really think you can wear down your opponent and start forcing errors from them and, and pick off, uh, pick your opponent off with a few drops here and there. It's... Um, I don't know. I don't know how effective that strategy is uh, to consistently be winning at that level. Hence why Cole is evolving and adding the volley and adding that mid-court control with the cross-court kills and stuff that I talked about. Uh, if, if, he, if he felt like he could become world number one without doing that, I don't think he would do that. But the fact that he is evolving those aspects of his game shows that he, he realizes that he needs to do that. So let's go to this next rally. Critical time near the back end of the fourth. Guys having a tight exchange in the front of the court. That's good width by Farag. Nice change by Cole. Actually, let me show you that one again because that was pretty cool. So Farag hits that good width, beats Cole on that width. The normal tendency is to hit a straight ball here, and Farag knows that, so he's getting ready to volley that. But Cole changes the angle, and he hits good enough width, preventing Farag from jumping on that volley. That What Cole hit takes a ton of skill by using your wrist to like snap through the ball, snap across it. So if you have the ability, that's a good one to use when you're under pressure because your opponent's probably going to be going for the straight volley. And then they go back into reset mode. Cole puts some pressure on. That's a great counter drop by Farag. He's really got Farag stretched out. That's that cross kill I was talking about. That was more of a fading drop. And there's the open court. And, and I'll get to this in a minute, but check that out. He goes to try to cane F Cole. <laughs> but that's the spirit that the game was played in. And here is championship ball. So check this rally out. Some good weight of stroke by Farag. Putting pressure. Straightens that out. Continues to apply pressure. He's far up in the court. Nice counter by Cole. That's tight by Farag as well. And the winning drop from the back. Oh, look at that target. Let's see that again. It rolled out of the nick. So here he is, plays the drop. Cole is probably not expecting it, although he reacts to it pretty well because the common shot would be to hit down to the line in the open court over here. Farag plays it and it just hits the nick and Cole just misses it. Farag is obviously elated, arms up. Some good respect between the guys. Good admiration, I think, for both of them, which is really cool. And there's that score line. Now the last thing I wanted to show you was the beautiful spirit that the game was played in. So Cole hits that awesome shot. I'll show you that one again because it was really cool. Farah goes and plays a smart change by hitting the ball in the midcourt. See, Cole is in the ready position and he makes a quick adjustment. Just gets his racket on the ball and reacts. And now I'll watch Farag's reaction. There's the push, but who goes back? Farag goes back. <laughs> I love that. Watch this again. And boom, watch Farah go back. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's see the next one. Here's Farag. It was a poor call. 
And even Cole apologizes. Watch, look at Cole's hand after this. The referee gives a call that it just isn't correct. Cole puts the hand up to apologize. Farag is in dismay. He is in disbelief. And look, at he's smiling. He's smiling. Just can't believe it. And he just continues smiling, which is really cool. Cole apologizes as well. And then Farag looks at the referee and he's like, come on, man, come on. And look at this. <laughs> look at Wayne Smith's. <laughs> Look at his face, he's just, he's so edgy. I know Wayne because he lives in Canada. Yeah, just look at the expression on his face. There he's like, oh, oh crap, oh crap. <laughs> oh man, these guys have the toughest job in the world. When you, you know, the, these pivotal decisions for these squash players, whose match, these matches are their livelihood, and the referee can play such a significant role in them, He's, he's experiencing the heat, and, and he knows it there. So Wayne, I appreciate everything you do if you ever watch this video. And let's check out this final one. This is the one we saw. And there he is, wanting to cane Cole and giving the push from a place of love. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I actually had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, I feel like there's a ton of value that you can take out of this. If you like it, give it the thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, share the channel and this video with a family or friend. I really appreciate your support and I hope to be back with another video for you next week. All right, take care guys. We'll see you soon.